This is from David Duncan. Wondering what kind of water maker you have. Sounds great that you only draw eight amps and get that amount of water, which is 35 liters. So which more water maker is it? So we've had a water maker on board Esper for the last eight years now, and we opted for the Schenker 35 modular. It's run pretty well, although it did run into a few problems, which Schenker have since addressed. Uh, more on that in a moment. First of all, what is a water maker and how does it work? So in a nutshell, a water maker takes salt water and it converts it to fresh water. And it does this by putting the salt water under extremely high pressure, about 800 PSI or 55 bar. And by pushing this through a very, very small hold membrane, it allows the water molecules to get through the holes, but it manages to hold back grit, dirt, bacteria and viruses. So only fresh water is allowed through the membrane as it's pushed through at extremely high pressure. And the rest of the salt water, the byproduct, is just dispensed over the side of the boat. So how is a Schenker water maker different to a normal water maker? Well, I mentioned that you need that high pressure, uh, the 55 bar or 800 PSI. And normally to attain that, you need a high pressure pump to get that kind of pressure. But the Schenker water maker has this energy recovery system. So it takes in the water pressure to around about five bar, puts it through the five micron filter, and it then goes through this energy recovery system. It actually increases the pressure hydraulically by about 10 times. So it attains that pressure through its special uh, system. So what this means is, is that we don't need a high pressure pump. We only need the low pressure pump. And the uh, result of that, of course, is that you don't need as much power. So our model runs at eight amps and is able to produce 35 liters of water. Uh, most other water makers, to get that same uh, amount of output per hour, you normally have a high pressure pump, which means more amps. So water makers could be described as a necessary evil. They're wonderful when they work. I mean, we produce so much water that we can make as much tea and coffee as we want, and we can have showers, and we can even do clothes washing as well. The independence that it offers you is amazing, second only to solar panels. But the problem is, of course, like most things on boats, they go wrong, and when water makers go wrong, they go properly wrong. The problem we had with Schenker's design was that it has this uh, polypropylene uh, block which allows the piston to drive the water through. And within that block in the original design, there were around about 12 O-rings within the actual cavity itself. And of course, over time, these O-rings will disintegrate. The problem is when they disintegrate, you stop making fresh water, and eventually the actual piston itself will stop moving through it. Now, I'm happy to say that Schenker have addressed this problem, and they have their model 2.0 and they've done away with these 12 O-rings and they've used these four super strong, uh, thicker rings inside that cavity, which uh, apparently, according to Schenker, were made with nanotechnology. Don't ask. Anyway, as you may know, if you'd watched our previous episodes, we attempted to uh, repair our water maker because it was getting pressure build up and we failed miserably. So the first problem was that we had this old design, so we had to get this new design uh, sent over from the UK. Uh, the second problem was that the fittings were slightly different. So enter Phil Bender of Prestige Marine. Uh, Phil is a long time expat uh, resident of Phuket. And he's got a lot of experience in both the yachting and the mechanical industry. When I met Phil, he had literally just become the Schenker dealer for Thailand. So Phil hadn't yet gone over to Italy, which is where the factory is based, to have his induction course. So when he came over, he didn't really know much about Schenker water makers, and I knew a little bit more. But of course, with Phil's experience and his background, it meant that when we knocked two heads together, two heads being better than one, we were able to sit down and tackle the problems that we faced in trying to refurbish our Schenker water maker. So first we had to take the water maker apart. Uh, like most things, when you know what you're doing, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, here's a time lapse of me dismantling the water maker. And you'll see, even in the time lapse, there are four central horizontal rods that hold the unit together. And these take quite a long time to undo. We'll come on to that later.
Alright, so Phil's arrived and uh, I've just been um, locking our heads together. According to the instruction manual, uh, to put the pistons on the rod, uh, we need to purge any air that is collected here. However, it seems as if uh, these are a newer design because they have a hole drilled in here and a hole inside which when you blow into uh, releases the air. On top of that the new piston appears to have some uh, grooves cut into it so that when you push it on again any excess air is going to be purged. So we believe that we don't need to do the fishing line trick which would have been to have wrapped a bit of fishing line around here, pop this on and pull the fishing line out to get rid of any excess air. So we think we can get away with just popping them back on. Agreed. And if it goes wrong? Blame me. So after putting the assembly back together, we put the water maker back in place, turned it on, we had the same problem. There was pressure build up, there was no fresh water coming out of the machine and it ended up blowing up at that weakest leak once again. What are your initial thoughts on that? Well, we've had a bit of a discussion on this and my thoughts are perhaps because it's been sitting pickled and idle for quite a number of months or even years um, without a lot of use. It perhaps may be a problem with the uh, with the uh, membranes themselves and uh, whether we can take them out and clean them and decalcify them if there's calcium buildup in them or or use an alkaline if there's a fungal buildup in them um, I have to look into that but to me that seems the logical situation that we've replaced all the parts in the amplifier or the, the pump uh, amplifying pump um, and we're still getting a pressure buildup so there's it's not allowing enough water to go through the membranes that's my thoughts on it in, anyway so I think the next step is to see if we can clean them. And if not, um, you know, if, they, if we pull them apart and find that they are not the way they should be, we have to replace them. Unfortunately, you've, you know someone in the area who maybe have to help out? Yeah, yeah, I've got a friend of mine who's done a bit of work on Schenkers and I'm uh, admittedly new to the job. I've just taken on the franchise, so I've been under your instruction today, which has been great. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we'll, we're learning together and we'll fix the problem together. Well, that night, Phil spent the evening uh, talking to Schenker on the phone and by email, learning as he went, because remember, for Phil, this was a new experience for him. And he found that I had put the wrong pistons on that central unit. When I received that central block, I'd been sent some new pistons. So, Watermaker Repairs, part 28. Uh, Phil has very kindly come down with the new parts and we are replacing the, uh, first of all we're looking at the, uh, the lower part here and uh, they've changed the materials and the o-ring setup and the center block here um, and uh, so we've just we've swapped out the old one which is just there on the right and we're just putting in the new one. Um, we need to reassemble this first uh, before we put the, uh, the o-rings in the top. The top unit will then sit on top of this and we'll put that in after we've bolted this back into the case. Um, I think that's pretty much it for that one. It's a little bit fiddly, we've got to take the rods out. Uh, that can take a while, but um, I think we're pretty much there. So let's reassemble this one, Phil, and uh, we'll okay. bolt it back into, into place. See what we can do, eh? So those pistons are the quick ones now, yeah? Yeah, the old pistons. Okay. Okay. Great. So the lower unit is in place. Uh, it's held in underneath with four Allen bolts underneath the unit, uh, which we've now put in. We've reconnected uh, this hose here, and Phil's now just putting in the, uh, the o-rings which sit on the top of the lower middle block and of course uh, these line up with the the upper block here which you can see which is upside down and uh, fortunately with this design there is only one way round that this can go uh, we think <laughs> we think I like that <laughs> <laughs> so now that we had the water maker sorted it was time to put it back together now remember I mentioned those rods earlier that hold the unit in place that took an age to put together well, Phil came up with an ingenious idea that cut some corners. Can you just tell us a bit about your Brainwave, this uh, new patented uh, tool you've uh, developed? Okay, well, working with uh, you yesterday, Jamie, we realised it's a 
a long process of putting the uh, the bars in that actually hold the uh, the, the bottom unit together and uh, you've got to screw all these this threaded bar right through with nuts on it and I said to you yesterday I said well what we need here is a socket on this with an electric drill so I'm back again on the job today guess what I've got <laughs> now all I've done is I've found a 10 mil bolt and this is actually a brass one so it's not going to rust it's good for for the work and you can see I've ground two of the flats off and that fits perfectly into the end of our 17 mil socket nice and snug and actually it doesn't even fall off so now we can really get to business with our threaded bars and have them done up in no time at all so Jamie if you ever see him in the Pacific and you need your shanker water maker fixed he's got all the tricks up his sleeve now <laughs> <laughs> Genius, that little trick worked a treat. So with the water maker now back in place, the question is, is it gonna work? <laughs> it works. <laughs> <laughs>